number one. Um, it is so great to see so many of you here today. Um, my name is Corey Earl, and I'm uh, the proud president of PO First of Canada. Um, today, we will um, have an outlook about uh, the federal election, as we all know, that's on September 20th, Monday, September 20th. Um, we'll learn about becoming a candidate. Um, we'll also learn about working for uh, Elections Canada and vote for the candidate in your riding. Elections um, Canada will also uh, have an opportunity to answer questions, answers and questions as well, to some you may have. Um, and then we will, uh, of course, talk about encouraging many of you to vote and encouraging others to vote as well. Um, we'll also be joined finally by comedian uh, Dean Dickinson, apologize if I pronounced your name wrong, um, uh, but opening remarks will start with Julie. Um, so <clears throat> I, again, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, but before we get started, I want to take a moment to acknowledge that Canada resides on the unceded territories of many nations. I'm coming to you today from Carton Place, Ontario, which is the traditional territory of the Algonquin First Nations. An acknowledgement of country means visitors, anyone who is not from this land, recognize the original people of the land, both in the past and the present. I certainly encourage you all to remember who you are, who, who we are, where we are standing and how we should proceed. And to remember all those uh, March children as well. Um, thank you. I am so proud of our organization. What we do to represent and advocate for people who are labeled with an intellectual or developmental disabilities. I am absolutely proud of the work of our members have done from across the country. And I'm excited about today. Um, Today, we're kicking off the PSC's Federal Election Workshop. We have been working with Elections Canada for, of course, over the many years, um, but certainly uh, during this federal election as well. Um, we've been sharing information, People First members. Um, this is absolutely a non-partisan event, which means we are not here to talk about candidates. Um, we want to answer questions about the voting process because I think that's extremely important, especially when you go to the polls. What kind of ID do you need or, um, or, or the process to make sure it's run smoothly for you? We want you to get involved in the federal election. There is jobs that are available. Um, and just remember that election day is Monday, September 20th. Um, and as well, the dance polls do open tomorrow. Um, we want as many, as many of you as possible to vote. Now, let me ask you, all, who has voted in a federal election? If I can get a show of hands, how many of you have voted in federal election? Perfect. That's, that's great. Um, and we hope that you'll continue to remember to vote, uh, whether it's the advance polls um, or uh, election day. <clears throat> um, so this this is great, and, and in fact, I want to see many more hands raised um, as we go on, and, and to reach out to your uh, friends, family, people who may have not voted in the past, who have said, "I'm not voting because I don't trust on who's there." You know what? Regardless on who someone votes for, encourage them to get on vote. It is a democratic right that many have fought for us to have this uh, opportunity to do. So encourage others down the road to get out there and vote. Um, we are going to, uh, so we, we are going to have some speakers, some slides and some information for you. We'll have videos from People First members who've done a great job. We also have someone from Elections Canada, Geneve, um, who will be able to answer questions. And at the end, we're going to hear from Dean, a comedian who's going to help us laugh a little today, which I think will be extremely important. Um, first, I have a little bit of a housekeeping uh, info for you. We have French translators on the phone. Uh, special thanks to Frank and Anne for joining us. Um, please hit the translation button at the bottom of your screen and click French. If you want to listen to English, please hit the English button. 
We're also recording the session today. If you do not want to be on camera, please turn your camera off. If anyone has any questions, just put it in the chat box or raise your hand. Someone will make sure that you are heard. Okay, well, let's get going and, and, and start with today. Uh, first, it is my honor and privilege to introduce uh, Judy uh, Wash Leash. There you go, Judy. Now you probably pronounced it wrong. Um, who is the former ML, MLA from Manitoba and MP from Winnipeg North. She's going to start off as today. Um, remember why it's important to get the voices heard in this election. And, uh, and I've met Judy, of course, over the years, and uh, who's been a strong advocate for people with disabilities, um, both um, politically, but also both personally as well. So it is my uh, honor to welcome Judy to come here today. Thanks for joining us, Judy. Thank you very much, Corey. I just want you to know the first slogan I had when I ran for office about 40 years ago, the first time, my slogan was, don't forget the name you can't remember. <laughs> it's Judy Wasilish Elise, but just call me Judy um, or Judy Alphabet. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me here today. And thank you to Monica and to Shelley and all of, the, all of you who have put this event on. It is a real pleasure to be part of this exciting time, to be part of this national kickoff election seminar or webinar. And I'm just thrilled to be part of it. Um, First thing I want to say is hello, people first of Canada. It's great to see so many people online from all over the country. It's such a critical time. Yeah, I want to talk to you about the important job you have of voting in this federal election. Got lots of people to hear from today. I'm going to try to keep my remarks to five or so minutes, and Monica is going to tell me when I've run out of time so you can get on with your agenda. But I do want to share with you a slideshow, and I'm going to put slides. I'm going to put this on. Now. See if I can get this, and then I'm going to say, "Can you see that?" And you can see, still see me working, Monica. Great. Okay, I'm going to press. Um, I'm going to press. Yes, we see it. Okay, great. Now I have to press some. Um, um, how do I start the slideshow? Press. You can share. press enter on your computer. Okay. You already have, you're already sharing it. Okay. Let's go back to that. Press share. Yeah, it's already being shared on the screen right now. Okay. So yeah. I just have to figure out how to go to school. Oh, there I go. There oh, go. good. Yeah. It's done. Thank you so much. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm not very good at technology, but I've got lots to say about voting. I'm also happy to hear that you've got Dean Jenkinson. He's, uh, I've seen him at many events in Winnipeg. He's going to have you uh, falling off your chairs and rolling in the aisle. What a treat. And you're going to hear from officials from elections and officials from Elections Canada about all the opportunities you have for voting in this election. You're going to hear about you can vote by mail, you can vote in the advance polls, which start tomorrow, you can vote on Election Day, September the 20th. Listen for everything you're going to hear, listen and look out for all of your options. What I just want to tell you is whatever, whichever way you choose to vote, just vote. Make sure you vote. Nothing more important than exercising your democratic right and freedom, which so many of our uh, uh, people before us fought so hard to get for us. And so many countries around the world still don't have this, this right of, 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 of voting and, and participating in a democracy. It's just so important. Every vote counts. Every vote makes a difference. And I just want to say, make your voice heard. All my life, I have been involved in politics. I learned from, um, I'm going to start here. All my life, I, I learned from a teacher many years ago who said politics is the route to power and power determines whose interests will flourish and whose will perish. So way back then when this teacher taught me this, I said, I got I to gotta get involved politically. I got to make sure I vote in every election, which I have done in every election since I turned 18, 52 years ago. Um, I, I have decided to go a step further and get involved in direct uh, political action to run for office, to get to campaign for elections, to uh, 
to serve in, uh, in the legislature and in parliament. And I am grateful for all those opportunities. I just knew from the start that my vote was a voice for change and that when my vote was joined with others in common cause, we are a powerful voice for change. Here I am in this first slide with my son, Nick, who has voted in every election since he turned 18 almost 19 years ago. Yesterday, he signed his mail-in ballot and we personally dropped it off at the returning office in his constituency. And my, my determination to be a voice for change was strengthened when I realized that the needs of my son, who has a brain disorder and uncontrollable seizures, were not being addressed by governments and by those in power, and that we needed to really push for change to get people like Nick recognized as, uh, as citizens of this country who deserved uh, all the opportunities available to everyone in, this, in a civilized nation. So together, Nick and I participated in the Disability Matters vote in, in Manitoba, which is a nonpartisan public awareness campaign involving Abilities Manitoba and Barrier Free Manitoba. Nick and I work together, we vote, we put up signs, whoops, we put up signs even in between elections, and this one's around Halloween, just to make the point about accessibility. We speak up wherever we can, and Nick helps me, helps me through many elections. Uh, I take him, I've taken him to every, uh, every part of my uh, uh, political life, and he has supported me, and, uh, and when I lost elections, cried for me. Here I am, um, uh, repelling off the highest building, I think it's the highest building in Winnipeg, to help support people living with disabilities, and to send a message to candidates and to political parties to put people first. So for me, the personal is political. That means my political drive comes from the challenges that my, that my family and I face on a personal level. My life in politics, whether voting, lobbying for policy changes, or serving in public office, has been, been guided by the need to speak up for people like Nick and to fight for equality and justice for all. So there's an old saying, I'm sure you've heard of it, that says, first you have to want to change the world and then you find a way to do it. So it begins with you know, you're being mad at, at what government is doing and angry. And then it's realizing you can take that anger and turn it into political action, believing that it is the responsibility of government at all levels, of all political stripes, to create the conditions of equality and to implement policies developed hand in glove with the abilities movement to empower people with disabilities and their families to fulfill their life's dreams and to achieve their full potential. So Nick, as I said, was there with me in Ottawa, in, in Manitoba, as I, as I spoke up and did everything I could to, to stand up for my beliefs. And I'm grateful for that privilege and opportunity. And I also want to say, whoops, I always go too fast. I just said the, the personal is political. Now I want to tell you that the political is personal and how grateful I am for all those who came before me and voted and advocated and, and, and served in public office to make change to benefit the people who live with disabilities. Organizations like People First Canada, you've, all of you have led to major public policy changes that have been transformative for people with disabilities. I'll, show, I'll run through a few slides to make this point. It is because um, of public pressure and strategic voting years ago, from, from, or from people who are advocates and, and, and cared about, about building a better world, that we actually force governments to move to close institutions and support community living. This is Nick's home. Uh, he's with empowering people in community. And thank God for those who came before who, who moved to, to create good residential care living for all people, regardless of ability. And it is, it is because of advocacy of residential service providers that people like my son are supported by loving professional disability support workers. It is because people voted for change that we have programs of integration in our education system. There's, there's Nick at school, whoops, sorry, whoops. Um, 
And we have respite care for families uh, with special needs children. We have funding for assistance in schools, on buses and at summer camps, and day programs that provide recreational, vocational, and educational opportunities. There's the next day program with community ventures. This, I'm gonna, uh, Monica, how much time have I got? Sorry? You have one minute left. One minute, okay, I think I can do this in one minute. So this is a critical election. The pandemic, COVID has shown us some really serious issues in our system. It has shone a light on the inequities within our community. Themes of low income, un underemployment, lack of access to services and recognition of the essential nature of the, of the disability support workforce have all been documented. This experience and knowledge strengthens our determination to, to get out there and build our community, to make our voices loud, to find ways to work with decision makers. We must make our voices heard in this election and then represented in the policies in the next Parliament of Canada. Lots has been achieved, but there's so much more to be done. The disability rights movement is leading the charge, teaching us to focus on ability and showing us the importance of building relationships in the community. This is uh, back to disability vote matters. These are people out, just like all of you right now, thinking about voting and organizing in your neighborhoods to get people out to vote. Lastly, let me just say, let's keep fighting. Get out there and vote and keep speaking up and fighting. May we all have the courage and conviction to vote for change, to build communities based on inclusion, diversity and equity, where all people are welcome and recognized for the hopes and dreams and capabilities that exist in unique and repeatable combination in each and every one of us. Thank you. Try to get out of my sharing. Stop sharing. Um, <laughs> wow, thank you so much, Judy, and thanks so much for kicking us off today. Um, and, and I really love that quote that I took a picture so I can, because uh, I think it's an excellent one to share as well. Um, and also, finally, thank you so much for being a champion for people with disabilities um, today, tomorrow, and, and certainly in the future. Um, so, um, Dean and many others who will follow, you guys have a hard act to follow now. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but really do appreciate that. Um, so on the lines of about Bolden, we are going to slow some sideshows um, about uh, the ID that you'll need, because I think that's really important when you show up at the polls. Um, and as we know, with COVID uh, restrictions, there are new COVID protocols, um, but um, so people can get out and, and vote safely as well. All righty. So we'll be slow on the sideshow here. Okay. So there we go. Um, of course, uh, it's really important um, to, to get a vote, and I'll just go on to the next one. Um, three ways to get involved in a federal election. <clears throat> you can become a candidate. Um, you can run for a position in your community if you want to. Um, we can work at, uh, we can work at elections. You can apply to for a job for Elections Canada, and we can vote for a candidate in our riding. Uh, the first way to get involved is to be a candidate uh, in a federal election. Uh, so be able to push the issues forward that uh, you think is really important in your community. So to become a candidate is absolutely important. Um, if someone, a candidate is someone who's, someone who's elected in your riding, um, we say that a candidate is running an election, a riding in the area, that the winning candidate represents. You can learn more about becoming a candidate by going to Elections Canada website. That's something that you might want to do in the near future. And certainly if you're interested, we certainly encourage you uh, to look at that because more voices and more people involved to run to become a candidate. Um, as when Judy started as well, um, she took her message across um, in, in her area as well, but certainly made a difference at the federal level, uh, not just in her community, but across the country. Another way to get involved is by working for Elections Canada. This is a great way um, to make sure that elections uh, run smoothly. It is a way to make some extra money. You may not know this, um, some of you may not know this, um, but I've actually been working for uh, with Elections Canada. Uh, and in fact, um, I've been working 
the municipal, provincial, and federal elections since I was 18 years old. Um, so I've certainly had my fair share. Um, and no different this year. I am actually working elections uh, this year. And, um, and you know, I, I've gone in from information officer to super uh, to registration to deputy return officer and poll clerk. Uh, this year, uh, tomorrow morning, um, I will supervise the polls at the Vance polls and on election day. Um, and together with a team, we will certainly serve uh, Canadians. Um, but uh, so I certainly encourage you all uh, to run and you do get paid for a job that at the end they, you will love. Um, so we are going to show a video now. Um, and we had fun making this video, I must say. Um, okay, so uh, please, uh, please enjoy. <laughs> right. Yeah. So election stuff, eh? So I'm actually excited and always thrilled when I have the opportunity to work for Elections Canada. Um, it, uh, you know, this whole process and this whole experience um, has created a lot for me. I have worked on election day um, and, and energy uh, and enthusiasm from Canadians. Um, you know, when, you know, when we show up, First thing morning, um, we can't get our doors open quick enough without a lineup being at the doors. Uh, and to me, that's that's a really good experience. Um, and as an election worker, it, it's I'm just thrilled when we see a room packed of people, Canadians, um, who are coming to fundamentally um, give their voice um, on, on making sure that they vote. My message to all People First members right across our country, get out and work Elections Canada. It will forever change your life. The experience that will provide you down the road uh, is immense. Um, and I strongly encourage you, you know, whether you, you want to work as an information officer, registration, uh, poll clerk, um, et cetera, um, just get your feet in there and you will be surprised. Um, well, not necessarily surprised in terms of the excitement for Canadians you'll meet, um, but the experience will last a lifetime. Um, I don't regret making the decision over the years of working election day. So I encourage all People First members to get involved. And guess what? You get paid to do a job that at the end of the day, you'll say it, it's not necessary about the money aspect because it's about that I loved what I did that day. So I uh, certainly enjoyed making that. Uh, thank you. Uh, certainly enjoyed really uh, making that video and, uh, and certainly encourage many others uh, to get involved uh, on, on a work in, uh, work in elections. Um, <clears throat> elections Canada usually hires and pays almost 250,000 election workers. Take that for a second. Two, almost 250,000 election workers during every general election to make sure it runs smoothly and fairly. And they do offer training um, and the training is paid. Um, and that's an opportunity for you to ask questions if you're unsure about something as well. Um, so then that way, when you go into election, you're not feeling overwhelmed. Uh, even if you are, there's a team behind you that will support you. Um, if anyone is uh, interested in applying for Working Elections Canada, please go to the website. It's easy. Um, it's easy to apply online. It's elections. Um, elections. Ca, I believe, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and we certainly encourage you. And, and there are jobs right now um, that are available. I certainly know the Toronto area, uh, Toronto downtown, and, and many other areas uh, are certainly looking for election workers. If um, so, what if you're worried about working during the pandemic? Uh, as we all know, it's a uh, uh, pandemic that we're in. Uh, next Canada is going to be very careful about everyone's safety. Um, we will be using uh, hand sanitizer um, and ask people to social distance. Uh, there will also be one poll worker at a desk, um, whereas versus before you've seen two, there'll be one to uh, respect the social distance and, um, and there will be uh, all election workers will have um, mask on, et cetera. So then that way it can, so that we you can feel safe as well. Um, voting is another way to be involved in a federal election. To register in a federal election, you have to be a Canadian citizen. Be at least 10, 18 years on election day. Be able to prove your identity and address. 
If this describes you, then you can vote. Now the question is, how do I prove my identity and address? Um, when you vote, you have three options to prove your identity. One of the uh, first options that you do have is show a government identification, um, something that's like your driver's license, or even if you travel and, and you have your passports uh, or any other government card with your photo, name, and address on it. Um, there's also a couple more options that you have. Um, if you don't have any one of those, you can still show two pieces of ID. Both have to have your name and at least one must have your current address. So, you know, whether it's a card that has um, your name on it, and then if you have a, a mail, uh, utility bill or et cetera, that has your address and all that, that would be two pieces of ID uh, or even bank statement as well. Uh, credit card, et cetera. Um, if you don't have any of those, guess what? That's still absolutely okay um, because you can use um, the things following, like your birth certificate, social insurance number card, library card, health card, credit or debit card, student ID card, India status card. There's a full list of different options for identification on election websites. Um, and option number three, if you don't have identification with your address on it, you can still vote. You get someone, you get someone to vote for you. Uh, bring two pieces of ID of your name on it and your neighbor or a friend or staff who can vote for you where you live. Or if you live in a group home or other care facility, you can get a letter called confirmation of residence. This will help. Uh, prove your address when you vote. Um, there are many different ways to vote. Just make a plan and find a way that works best for you. You will have different ways you can vote. So let's look at the options here. Um, first, you can vote in person. We use many different spaces for voting in Canada. There is a Lombok, Lombok. Uh, they have uh, set up a polling station here. Polling station is what we call a place where you go vote. Um, you know, so I, I've seen some, you know, I just toured our place yesterday uh, at the curling club. Um, and um, I don't know, I think I might have to get some curling rings out there because too bad the floor is not uh, enough for us to go sky. But we actually have a really big location. And one of the biggest things that we have to check is uh, making sure that it's fully accessible, um, but also for Canadians when they come in uh, for social distancing um, and, uh, and making sure that, you know, if the weather's changing or something like that, that we can try to accommodate as many people as possible. And so we did that. Now, having said that, in the last election, we had someone from a different community um, who was supposed to be at a location, but it wasn't fully accessible. Um, so went to a different location um, and, uh, and made sure that it was fully accessible for them. So there is, um, we've had some, especially in the rural area, uh, have had some unique challenges, but, uh, but nevertheless, um, this time in the past and this time, they really try to make sure that the space was available um, for people, especially during with COVID as well. Um, so where do I go and vote? Where is the advanced polling station? Uh, what's the phone number for Elections Canada or return officer? <clears throat> um, and, um, and how accessible your polling station will be? So this is called a VIC card, and it's a polling registration card. Oftentimes you heard the word VIC. Um, it comes in the mail, and it's like a postcard. Uh, has many, ha, just show of hands, has many people received their VIC card yet? Perfect. Okay. Um, that's great. So, um, and this, um, on this side is we're showing um, when the registration card has your name and address. It also has the date of election, which this year is September 20th. 
Uh, the other side of the folder card actually tells you where the dance poles are um, and where to vote. Uh, it tells you whether your polling station is accessible. If it's not, you can call Elections Canada and they can let you go uh, to a different uh, one. If you do not have a registration card, don't worry. You absolutely, and I want to repeat, can still vote. So if you have not, if you have not received this card, um, please don't be discouraged by that. Uh, you can still go and vote. Um, the first way uh, is voting on election day at the polling station. To find uh, to find your polling station, check the voter information card sent to you by mail, or go to Elections Canada website and type in your postal code and the number there uh, or you can call Elections Canada and they will tell you where to go and vote uh, and I want to just keep this one out here for a second here uh, the number is 1-800-463-6868 um, so we really encourage you um, and I'll just leave that up for a couple more seconds so if people want to take down that phone number um, and if you have any questions at any point, uh, that's the number you can also uh, uh, reach as well and, and speak to someone directly as well. Okay, perfect. You can also vote before an election day because sometimes people are too busy on election day. How many of you where you've been really crazy on election day? You're like, yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness for advance polls, um, because I'm going to vote um, in advance, or if you're working that day, or if you just simply don't want to vote on election day because you want to um, wait until later to find out the results. Whatever might be the case, you still have opportunities beforehand to go out and vote. Um, this is called advance polls, and advance polls actually start tomorrow, September 10th, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, so 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th. Uh, the date and address of your advance poll can be found on the folder information card sent to you by mail, or you can go to Elections Canada website and type in your postal code. Again, it's elections.ca. Um, and we will, um, and we'll type in, in the chat box uh, the website as well. So if you want to click on that to get more information. You can also vote by mail. Elections Canada will provide you with a special ballot, voting kit, and an envelope. You just need to ask them uh, for it before September 14th. And I will remind everyone that September 14th is fast approaching, which is um, this coming Tuesday, um, will be September 14th. So please, if you, whether it's transportation or whether it's anything that will uh, impact you, we encourage you. To please call uh, Elections Canada to get your vote in um, uh, so that way you don't miss that opportunity uh, ahead of schedule. And again, that number is simply 1 800 463 6868 or go to their website elections.ca. Um, I sound like I'm a commercial here, um, but, um, <laughs> but uh, please reach out to um, them. The deadline to apply uh, for Show about is again September 14th, and I want to say it's 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and, and please, please don't wait. You need to arrange this ahead of time in order for you to have it in on time. If you want to vote, it's if you want to vote, it's really extremely important. Um, I say you need to have a plan. You need to decide what works best for you and give yourself enough time to do it um, instead of film rushing. And oftentimes when people come in on election day or advanced polls, um, they come in and they say, I only have five minutes. Um, please, please give yourself that extra time, especially with COVID protocols um, and, and with the new restrictions. We want to make sure that people get in there quickly as possible, but there may be a delay. It's, it's not the poll workers. Uh, they're, they're doing the best they can on advance poll. So uh, if you're going if you're going for a couple minutes, I, um, um, I would strongly encourage whatever you do have just to um, expect that it could be delayed an extra few minutes, and uh, but we'll get you out as soon as possible. 
Um, it is your right to vote. It is extremely important. And I know Judy talked about this and, and so many others that I've talked to. Um, your voices simply could change today, tomorrow, and the future. And by casting your votes um, as community leaders in your communities, you are making a difference. And you're saying to people who fought for decades um, that you're that that you have you're taking this right with pride um, to vote um, election. So we're gonna watch another video. It's going to, I think it's going to be my first time to vote in a federal election. Hi everyone, I'm Donna from People First of New Brunswick. The federal election is coming on September 20th and we all need to make a plan to vote. Who can vote? You can vote if you're a Canadian citizen, if you are 18 years old and you have to be able to prove your identity and address. For the federal election, you can vote in person on September 20th, or you can vote in events polls, or you can mail in your vote. You, you just need to, uh, to be registered to vote. If you get one of the registration cards in the mail, then don't worry, you are registered to vote. If you don't get a card, you can still re register. register. You can even register at the polling station when you go vote. You need the right identification. If you're not sure what that is, you can go to People First of Canada's website for a link or list of identification. Just remember, it's your right to vote. Make a plan and make your voice heard in the federal election. Bonjour tout le monde, je suis Donna, Donna de Personne d'abord de nouveau brunswick Puis j'encourage tout le monde que aller voter pour la élection fédérale le 27 septembre. That was great, and we really appreciate uh, Donna uh, Semina. That was an excellent uh, video. Um, so now it's it's my route to welcome Elections Canada. Uh, uh, we have Janine. Uh, Ginny, I'm just looking for her on the screen here. Okay, Ginny, oh, there you are. It's like, <laughs> um, uh, welcome. And um, it's an opportunity for, uh, well, I'll give you some, maybe a couple words to say. And then uh, if you have any questions, this is your opportunity to ask questions. Uh, if you're unsure about something, um, then then please, uh, Ginny will be able to assist you as best she can. If not, direct you to the right uh, as well. So, uh, so welcome. Thank you, Corey. Thanks for such a warm welcome from uh, all of People First Canada. And uh, I'm, uh, I loved your videos. They're great. Uh, your recruitment video is on point, Corey, because uh, I keep receiving messages that we are looking for election workers. We're very short this year. So anybody that's interested in uh, working at an election is a fantastic opportunity, as Corey said. Uh, you learn a lot and you really feel connected to your community and you feel like you're uh, helping other people have a voice. And that's important, too. So uh, thanks for, for doing that video, Corey. I, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, I think the coverage was absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I don't have any questions after seeing all the all the um, material you've presented, but I'm certainly happy to answer any questions anyone has. Does anyone have any questions for uh, King? Um, point. I see Donnie. Yep, go ahead there. Yeah, um, I was thinking of, uh, if you vote early, say you voted early, and then... Uh, voted for that candidate, and then you heard on TV later on, you heard some other candidate, oh, that's nice, I should have voted for him. But you voted early, and you made your citizen too fast. Uh, what would you What would you do? You, you can't, I don't think you can change your vote. 
Yeah, unfortunately, Donnie, you cannot change your vote. Um, so it is unfortunate if you uh, have chosen somebody and then change your mind. The only thing I can encourage people to do is really find out about the, the candidates in their area ahead of time. You will have really good websites, so you can check their websites, and that way you can uh, you can um, kind of get an idea, hopefully ahead of time. I believe a lot of the candidates, you can reach out to someone on their team if you have questions ahead of time, so you can engage with those candidates even if you're not seeing them on TV or hearing about them. So I encourage you to find out as much as you can ahead of time, even if you're going to vote early. Um, you know, it's not that far ahead, the advanced polls. There's only really a week in between. So uh, not a lot changes, between, you know, during that time. But certainly, definitely, just learn as much as you can before voting because you cannot change your, your mind afterwards. Once you've voted, whether it's by mail or at the advanced polls, um, you can't vote again. And uh, I vote, mostly vote on the on election day because that's the last day and, and that's the last uh, you do with your candidate. So you you won't hear any more uh, better than that. So if you vote it the last day, you're pretty sure that that's who you want to vote for. Correct. Yeah, the last day, um, really after the after the election day, which this year is the 20th of September, a Monday. After that, you won't hear from the candidates anymore. Uh, um, certainly not telling you what their platforms are yeah, and that. giving you information. Well, so you can have every. I, I, I wait to the last day, and then I'm pretty sure of who I'm going to vote for. The only thing I encourage people to to is, as Corey mentioned, this year with COVID, it kind of is important. To, well, it is very important to have a plan because if you get sick and can't go on election day, you won't have enough another opportunity to vote. So just have a plan and make sure you know what you want to do and make sure you are aware that if you do get sick, um, you know, just before election day or on election day, that's your last chance. So you won't be able to vote. Absolutely. And, and thanks, Donnie. Great questions. Uh, Jonathan, is there your hand up there? Jonathan, you're on mute there, Jonathan. Okay. Yeah, I'm on the other, I'm good on the other camera. Yeah. I'll be doing it on the other camera. Hold on a minute. Yeah. That's a, that's a, uh, yeah. The only thing is. What do you mean? Okay, so some technology glitches there. Um, does anyone, and I, I can come back to you, Jonathan, when you're ready, unless you're ready yeah. now. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you had mentioned before of the um, pieces of identification. I've tr What I've tried in the past is using my um, Medicare card in the past, Medicare or hospital cards for ID, but they have... But it's been refused in the past. Oh, I can't answer that. Um, the the medical ID card is um, uh, a secondary card. Um, so if you just take another uh, with your, you can use your medical card. But if you just take one other piece of ID and that's just something with your name on it, it could be, and your address on it, it could be uh, a prescription bottle has your name on it. It could be a letter from your school with your name on it. It could be tax 
uh, papers, anything or a bill, anything with your name on it. So by all means, take your health card, but just have another piece with you also. Yeah, and, and to, to go to that point, uh, Jonathan, yeah, it's, I, I think over the course of years, and, and it's been a very challenging one, right, between medical health cards and all that, and I think, um, you know, working in past elections, I mean, some of the things of ID are a lot more uh, broader than what they ever used to be, right? And I think part of that is because Canadians have said um, some people don't have all kinds of ID, uh, depends on the circumstances. So I think what Elections Canada has done, um, ha in my view, has done extremely well by um, by adding more to the list. Um, and I think because they've heard simply from people um, that, you know, whether someone's in a group home, whether someone's homeless, um, et cetera, like some of the ID is very minimum for people to have. And, and I think this ID list, could it, could it be improved? It can always be improved. It could always be increased. But I think as time goes on, that's how we learn. Uh, from that, but I but I think the ID requirement now is a lot more less restrictive than it ever used to be, because um, I think the whole point is making sure that you're 18 years old, making sure you're a Canadian citizen, making sure that you have an address, um, and if you have a card or uh, photo. So to to your point, I absolutely hear you, but um, but please bring your health card and another thing that has your address on it, and you should have no problems uh, when you go and vote. Does anyone have any other questions? So Michael, Michael has his hand up there. Uh, thank you. I'm <laughs> Michael. Oh yes. Um. So my question is, um, do you guys like you know, for example, that not many people are carrying the cards around anymore, and most of the people are using the phone and keeping all the cards on it because we have the ability to have technology now. But in the event that people don't have the cards on them, they want to vote. Do you guys still do um, what it's called um, sworn affirmation? Do you love, you know, like a statement? You say who you are, and you sign a paper. Like, do you guys still do those anymore? Yes, uh, I can answer that. So, um, yes, yeah, sure. If if you don't have any of the ID on the lists which as Corey mentioned are pretty long, but if you don't have any, you can uh, have someone who knows you and who uh, is voting in the same uh, elections office as you and who has their own ID. You can have them uh, swear uh, an oath to say that you are indeed the person you say you are. So I, I think we've kind of got that covered um, it, it, you know, it just has to be someone, you know, it doesn't have to be a relative, but someone who knows you, who would be able to say, yes, I know this person. Yes. He's Michael Madden. And yes, he lives in this, uh, area. And they would sign a paper. Uh, does that help? Uh, does that answer your question there, Michael? You're good. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Donnie. Yeah, I just got a quick question. If you're if you're 18 years old, you only lived in uh, Nova Scotia for six months, are you allowed to vote? I thought it was a year. No, you're okay with the six months. Oh, you're allowed because I thought it was had to be in Nova Scotia for living for a year before you could vote. Sorry, yeah. Monica. Okay. Sorry, and, and, and that may determine a province territory, but I know for the federal election that we're talking about, um, as long as you're 18 years of age, uh, where you reside current, um, as long as you have ID that presents uh, with that, um, then absolutely you should not be denied vote. If that's the case, then reach out to Elections Canada um, as soon as possible if that is the case. And you can, just so I want to clear, if you do have any issues at the polling stations, uh, Elections Canada is still working that day. Um, so if you are struggling, please reach out to them um, because then they will be able to get in contact, right? Um, there, yeah. So, but yeah, to your question, um, Monica and then Shelly. I think Shelly was up there first. I oh. have a question from somebody else. You go ahead, Shelly, and then I'll ask this one. Okay. I just actually was maybe looking for clarification and I think Michael may have been, I understood Michael's question maybe a little bit differently, but then 
if Michael wasn't asking it, I'm going to ask it. Um, on, because we live in such an electronic world now and every, so much of what we do is on our phones, like for me personally, I don't get my, my utility bills, like my hydro and my phone bill and things. I don't get them in paper copy anymore. So I guess, I don't know, Michael, if this is where you were going, but on election day, if I'm going to show a utility bill, will the election worker take an elect, like, can I show it to them on my phone? Absolutely. Okay. And I'm looking at Jamie for that. I, I, I just went through training and, um, and, and absolutely is, you can show things on your phone, uh, electronics now. Yeah, am I correct on that, Jamie? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you're correct, okay. Tori. Michael, is that where you ask, kind of asking the same thing? Well, kind of, but also, what if uh, we have an ID kind of phone, like instead of carrying our ID card, we take a picture of it and keep it on the phone just in case. Oh, yeah. So would they accept that, Corey, if I showed a picture so, of my driver's license? Absolutely. So just to be very clear, because as long as, you're, as, long as the uh, election worker can see your ID, okay, um, then, then absolutely. Am I correct on that, Jeannie? I, I'm pretty confident that there are training as long as they can see your ID. Um, because if someone takes a picture of it, it's no idea if they ha it's no different than if they have it on their phone. Yeah, correct. I mean, if your if your ID has your picture on it, uh, then and your name and your address, then it's your ID. Uh, they right. have to be able to match that ID up yeah. with your uh, with with you. Okay, I have one more question, and then I'm done. Uh, is uh, is uh, vaccination cards now accepted as a piece of ID? No. Prevention? I don't think so. No? No, they are not. Okay. They've come in a little bit, a bit too late for us to be able to train all the Elections Canada oh. workers on that. Uh, so uh, that's, that's the only reason. I mean, they're uh, still a great a great and important piece, but uh, we can't accept it as ID at Elections Canada. Okay, thank you. Um, but I think to Shelley's point, I think that's a really great question because I, I think some perhaps may look at that as perceived, some people who may have had their vaccinations, but yeah, uh, we were told the answer was simply no. Um, yeah. Um, Monica. Thanks. Okay, so I got this question from someone. Uh, the question is, can you explain spoiled ballots and like when you get into the voting booth, what if I make a mistake? Do I need to get it in the box? What if I go outside of the box? Like, can you explain how that all works, please? Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, I, I can help. Um, if you've truly made a mistake on your ballot, uh, inform an Elections Canada worker immediately. We do have the ability, uh, you know, to, um, to work with you on that. So uh, definitely, like, if you've just, you know, you've been, whatever you've done, you've put two X's on it and you really only meant to put one or two check marks and you really, really only wanted to put one, uh, please reach out to an Elections Canada worker at the polling station immediately. Um, a spoiled ballot is indeed, if you mark two uh, marks on two different candidates and then you close it up and put it in the box, then we can't count that ballot um, because we don't know exactly what your choice was because there would be two or more. So uh, that's that's the definition of a spoiled ballot is when being um, marked. Now, if you're mark if you're marking a ballot and, and elections at your polling station, it'll already have your candidates' names on it. So you just have to choose the one you want and very carefully tick or or cross next to it. If you're doing vote by mail, it's different. Vote by mail is called a special ballot. Uh, process and it's not the same ballot that you've seen every time you go to an elections office or, or Elections Canada polling station. The ballot for the, the mail-in vote is blank. There is no name on it. It's just one, um, one line where you write a name in and then you have to put it in a series of envelopes. But that one line where you write the candidate's name in 
you have to know the candidate. You have to know who you want to vote for. And you can go on uh, elections.ca and right on the front page, you'll see a spot to put in your postal code and you can get a list of candidates for your exact area. And then you can take, you can write down the name of that candidate on that line and then put it back in your, in the envelopes and mail it back. If you spell the name incorrectly, uh, like my name is Janine and I have a lot of N's in it and you put, you don't put all the N's in, but it's very clear that you wanted to choose me, then we will still count that ballot. It doesn't matter if you spelt my name a little bit wrong. Um, if we can't read the name at all, then that's a spoiled ballot. So just try to write it as clearly as possible but the spelling is not as important as us understanding exactly who you were voting for. Don't fill it in with the party name because we need the name of the candidate, not the name of the party. And don't fill it in with the leaders of the parties that those are the guys we see on TV all the time. Um, we really need the candidate in your area. So if you're not sure, just go online, or call uh, Elections Canada, the number that has been given, and somebody will help you out. I hope that answers that question, but if there's any more uh, details needed, please let me know. No, I, I think that I think that was uh, I think that was great answered, and, uh, um, and and just so everyone's clear, is you will receive a pencil um, at your Bolden station to. Uh, and we highly as you pencil there that will be sanitized. Uh, that pencil can now become yours uh, because of COVID protocols, uh, or you can drop it in the bag at the front. Uh, let me tell you, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of pencils for this weekend. Um, and um, that I've never thought I would dream of not looking at a pencil again, but there is hundreds now. Um, so we have time just for briefly a couple more questions. Um, this has been really great. Um, the conversation doesn't end today. Of course, if you have any more, please reach out to me directly or reach out to any one of us, Elections Canada, and we will do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I'm just looking at my screen here. Shelly, I don't want to ignore you. Do you have another question? I think Michael has a question. Michael has his hand up there. And I actually do, and I'm going to put my hand up. Okay. But Michael, but Michael, Michael go ahead. Michael and then, yeah, my, well, this, yeah, is the, this is more of a comment. So yesterday I went to the returning office and I cast my ballot. Um, the only difference that was different from it was the fact that I did not have to write my name and they gave me the standard um, the standard voting slip with all the candidates' name on it. And um, it was mostly, they put it in two envelopes or the small one where they stick it in and the big one where you have to sign your name to say that it's you that voted and to date it so that they know they received it and that it can be counted on the uh, election day. So that's the only difference I know. So I'm not sure if the, what the difference about if the writing the name in and the uh, standard ballot that they provide to you on uh, at the advance polls and on election day as well. Like, is that totally different from what you were mentioning, Jenny? It is actually different, and to Gina's point, is um, is because um, the ballots in some areas have not been ready. Um, I'm working at advanced polls tomorrow, and we don't even have our ballots ready yet. Um, so therefore, um, therefore, you've had, and I went and voted at the return officer, and I actually had to write in the name. And my first reaction this time was as last time, because last time I, you know, made mistake, didn't get help. This time I got a lot of help with trying to make sure I got the correction of the name and last name. Um, but um, but you had to make you had to put the candidate in there uh, because simply the ballots were not, they were just pushing for time for election. But on election day, and normally in majority of areas, um, you the candidates uh, and the party will actually be on the ballots. Uh, and they will cross off your name um, on that when you show the ID and all that. So yeah, so it is slightly different. Um, uh, but yeah, like I said, we don't even have our ballots for even advance polls tomorrow because uh, they're just... Uh, because of time and NG, I don't know if you can more. 
Yeah, sure. So yes, um, there are certain instances where um, the ballots would have already uh, would not have the names, but specifically the vote by mail will not have names. Those are all blank ballots. Um, so that, that's, that's why if you went to your, your, uh, your Elections Canada office, normally they do have the names and their job is to cross you off the list. Uh, as Corey mentioned, there, there are extenuating circumstances this time round or special circumstances this time round because of COVID and because um, we had such a quick election. We did not know ahead of time because it's a minority government that called the election. We did not know ahead of time. Like in 2019, we knew the date ahead of time. So we, we, were, we had a lot more time to kind of get things ready. Perfect, and, and thanks so much for that. Uh, finally, uh, Shelly. Really quick before we wrap up the q and I wondered if we could, I know you touched on it earlier, but just to, can you just give us a really brief um, what to expect at the polls um, due to COVID restrictions? Are we longer lineups to mask or not to mask? Like, can you just go over that really quickly with us again? Please and thank you. So I can cover that off. Um, we are at Elections Canada, we're following the rules of the governments in each province or territory. Okay. So if there is a mask rule in your area, please wear your mask. Uh, if you have a, re a medical reason and uh, cannot wear a mask, then uh, you will still be allowed to vote. Uh, you won't be turned away or you shouldn't be turned away. Um, now, once you get to the polls, uh, there are uh, certain things in place. And as Corey mentioned, there's only going to be one person at the desk. In the past, you've seen two people. They will have masks. All of the workers will have masks. We have marked on the floor that the spots where you can stand so that you're two meters away, so that you're far enough away. And when you actually get to the desk to be able to vote, um, there will be plexiglass between you and the worker. Uh, this is to keep you and the worker safe. And um, and then they will continue. You, they'll still be the... the um, the, she, the uh, screen that you go behind, uh, those things you will recognize from before. Uh, you'll, you'll be asked then to hurry out. Sometimes I live in a small village and a lot of people hang around and visit after they've voted. This time around, we're not asking people to visit. We're asking them just to vote and go home and keep it as safe as possible. So you might hear that as well. Um, and you'll be indicated, you know, kind of where you have to go in and where you have to go out. As Shelley mentioned, if a lot of people go at the same time, there will be lineups. So um, make sure, you know, you, you take an umbrella if it looks like it's going to rain, or you take a bottle of water if, you know, you have to wait a little while. As Corey mentioned, workers are going to be trying to get everybody through as quickly as possible. Uh, but just because of the nature, just because of the way elections are and everybody needs to do the same thing, um, there could be lineups. So just kind of make, again, make a plan in case uh, that's what happens. Okay, so perfect. Uh, Donnie, if, if you can be very brief. Uh, yeah, like, I'm going to be very brief. Um, yeah. our, um, our protocols are going to be changed as of the 15th of this month. We're going to be in stage five. So our protocols will be like they said, you can wear a mask if you want to. You don't have to if you're vaccinated. But if you're vaccinated, if you're, um, if you're not vaccinated, you got to wear one. So can I just be perfectly clear on that? Um, because um, it all depends on the province territory and whether masks are mandatory and by the health yes. units, right? We just went through training on that, and there's a whole reluctance where 
part of our training did say that wheat masks were optional. Um, and then the RO came back and said, absolutely not. Mask are actually mandatory because that's actually given by the health units. Um, and, um, and again, like anywhere else, um, because this is a public place, just like if you go in the grocery store, you're required to wear a mask, going to on Bolden for events or election, uh, or even Bolden at the election office, that's no different uh, than when you're out uh, at a shopping mall. Um, and again, so please follow whatever protocols are in your province territory uh, by the health units uh, will have to be here too, uh, because that, that was a concern for us um, as well. Um, the only difference is, is like anything else, if someone's exempt because of medical, um, then that's the only difference. But if someone doesn't want to wear the mask, mask for the heck of it, they have an opportunity, especially this weekend, to vote by mail and ballots or on election day, they will have to wait till the room is clear in order for them to vote. And they've done that just to make sure people's safety is number one as well. So, um, okay, well, thanks so much. So this has been a really great, great conversation. Um, and in fact, we probably could spend a lot more time um, um, on, on this. So thanks so much, Nini, for um, for being here today and also for answering so many uh, questions around. We really do appreciate it from all of us at People First. So thank you. All righty. So we are... Uh, here. Um, <clears throat> And one of the biggest things, and we'll keep on saying it, is to remember to get out and vote. It's extremely important uh, that you do that. Um, now, we have a few more videos that we're going to share with you right away. The first video is from Joanne and Kevin and Steph, reminding us to use our voices. Um, and then we will show uh, video number two, which is another video um, that we had fun putting together uh, so, Monica? Sure thing. Okay. Thank you. I believe that uh, we all have uh, uh, the right to vote, and no one should, should uh, take away our, our rights. Hi, my name is uh, Stephanie Paul, but I like to be called Steph. I am from uh, Ontario, and I'm also the president of People First for Ontario. And I would like uh, every, everyone to, to go out and vote for the federal elections. My name is Kevin Johnson. I'm the president of People First of Manitoba. I encourage everybody to get out there and vote. If you don't vote, then you're not going to be heard. My name is Joanne. I am from Westwind, BC. And I am so excited to vote this year. And I love to see you vote and get your voice here. Without your voice, nothing can be done. So thank you very much. Get out there and vote. Get out, out there and vote. Everyone should uh, uh, get out and uh, vote and uh, and and get our uh, voice uh, to be heard. Cut. Great, great videos. Thank you so much, Steph, uh, Joanne, and uh, Kevin for doing that. Uh, so proud of you guys. That that was great. Uh, so clearly, messages get out there and vote. Uh, and uh, so let's show the final one there. Okay. Yeah. I strongly encourage everyone to get on vote, um, to send your message out, to, um, to encourage others, because this is our democratic right that people have fought for decades for us to have this right to vote. And let's not take that away. That's get on vote. That's uh, regardless on who you vote for, regardless what political party you vote for, your vote matters and it could change our future today, tomorrow, and the years to come. Okay, now we are going to. Okay. Um, so, 
we thought that we would end um, end this webinar series with a little bit of comedy um, and to laugh, um, as we all need that nowadays. And it is my privilege to welcome Dean Dickinson. Um, he's from Winnipeg, and he's done a lot of writing for TV. We're so excited to have you here today. Dean, take it away. Thank you very much, Corey. That was, I was exciting seeing you side by side with yourself in the video because it was like a time machine. Here I am before, <laughs> right after I got a haircut, and here I am weeks later after my haircut grew up. Uh, Janine, thank you for your expertise. Judy, thank you for the kind words right off the top. That was so uh, very nice to know that I, I do a lot of after dinner comedy and a lot of politicians will come and eat the dinner and then give their little speech and then uh, get in the car and I get on stage and they're driving home to tuck their kids in. And Judy stays and watches the show. And I'm so grateful uh, that not only she does that, but she remembers me. Uh, I've heard a lot of wonderful things today. The one that will stick with me, free pencil. Free pencil if I vote. So I'm going to be there on Monday for sure. People First of Canada, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for the kind invitation to join you, to share some uh, laughs and silliness about that most hilarious of topics, voting. Last time I was invited, it was to speak uh, about infectious disease. You guys have all the best comedy topics for me. I cannot wait for the invitation to your Zoom webinar about human trafficking. That'll be super fun. Uh, let me first of all say I am proud to tell you I vote in every election. It may not be an informed decision, but I make sure I vote because we had a stretch uh, in the mid 2000s where it felt to me like every six, eight, 10 months, we would have another election, another minority government would fall, I would get more pamphlets under my door, I would promise myself I'm going to read them all this time. And I'm going to make a very informed decision. And sometimes it wouldn't happen, but I will vote what I would do the polls are closing in an hour or two, I head out the door, kind of pay attention on the way to and whoever has the most lawn signs you probably get my vote because I want to be on the winning team, right? I want to pick up the paper the next day and say, that was us. We won. Yay. We and woo. Our, and it's not a responsible way to vote. Don't do it. Last election, I ended up voting for Remax and we didn't get a single seat, probably because they don't let us in the debates. That's why. But uh, voting, as we know, is an idea that goes back thousands of years. And we know it's an old, old, old institution and an old idea because one of the big questions in a lot of places, including Canada, is uh, moving forward whether we should encourage more voting by mail. We've talked about it today as if mail were the wave of the future. That's how old voting is. By comparison, the Postal Service is some newfangled gizmo. I think it's been 10 years since I stopped getting anything in my mail but flyers and speeding tickets. But Election Canada is like, what's this I hear about a man who'll take folded paper to another city? Let's look into that. <laughs> and that, you know, if we're honest, it's one of the things that keeps people uh, who don't vote from voting. The idea that you have to leave your house and find another place and stand in a line and bring the ID. And how many of us leave our houses much anymore, realistically? I can have meals delivered. I can have groceries delivered. I can have Amazon send me books and a home gym and sex toys. I mean, Elections Canada, if you really want my vote, you skip the dishes me that ballot and I want it here in 45 minutes and I want it hot. You can get me to vote if you put it up on your Instagram stories, Elections Canada. Just let me hit that boom little, little vote button. That would be wonderful. But it is a sad fact that not a lot of people uh, vote. Or I guess I guess a more optimistic way of saying it is a lot of people choose not to vote. That is just a fact. In the 2016 U.S. election, the person who won, and I use uh, the word person and won uh, loosely, but the, the person who won got 63 million votes. The number of eligible voters who didn't choose to vote, 100 million people. If those 100 million people had shown up and voted their conscience, the president of the United States for four years would have probably been none of the above. But why don't people vote? Well, if we listen to them, one of the things people say when they're asked that question is none of the candidates excited me. Really? Excited? That's, that's your bar? That's what you need to be excited? You want to get all jacked up hearing about incremental infrastructure investments? How do you want to get super pumped 
learning about phasing in tax credit on after school sports. You don't vote because there's no adrenaline involved. Should we suspend the voting booth above a shark tank? Would that, would that do it for you? Should we fill it with bees? Would that make it exciting? Do you want to cast your ballot by picking which bungee cord you jump with? Do you know, I, I, I think, how little would I do in my life if I waited until I was excited to do it? But sorry, honey, I didn't do the dishes or take out the garbage because uh, neither of those <laughs> choices excited me. Sorry, kids, I didn't make any dish dinner. No, nothing in the fridge gave me a thrill. Sorry, Grandma, didn't give you your pills. It didn't make my heart pound. Oh, not yours either. All right, well, sorry about that, Grandma. Some people say they don't vote when they think there's a candidate, uh, or that there isn't a candidate, I should say. They don't vote when there isn't a candidate that they consider good enough to deserve their vote. And that's called principled abstention, I'm told. And I have a friend, and he's a comedian in Vancouver uh, named Jacob Samuel, and he has a very funny joke where he says, democracy is not about electing the best person. It's about not electing the worst person, right? You're always trying to elect the least worst option. He says, vote like you're picking out an avocado at the grocery store. No, 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 maybe for a short time. Some economists argue that voting is irrational. They say it's an irrational decision because one vote almost never swings an election. But I think never voting because one vote will not swing an election most times is like never eating because missing one meal will almost never kill you. Over time, it's a bad idea. A lot of people say they tend to vote for the candidate they would most like to sit and have a beer with. And that's a, that's a terrible way to choose, right? Because the person you want to have a beer with is the person that has crazy, stupid, irresponsible stories to tell you, right? The person you want to have a beer with says, one time I woke up in Tijuana in the middle of a cockfight and the cartel told me I owed them 10 grand. And if I didn't pay them, they were going to cut off my thumbs and feed them to me. And I had to fight my way out with a machete and a blowtorch. That is a good beer story. That is someone you want to have a beer with. That would be a terrible, terrible prime minister of a country. I want my politicians responsible and boring. Put down your beer and get back to work. You don't want a prime minister that says, my fellow Canadians, I want to tell you about this other time I was in Vegas and me and these two hookers. Hey, 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 no, 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 no. Get back to work. That's what I want from my politicians. I read that scientific studies have shown that people tend to vote for the most uh, attractive candidates often. And that's called the halo effect, that we attribute all kinds of positive characteristics to more attractive people. But is that, is that a correct thing to do? I, don't, I doubt it, you know. Pretty people are not necessarily the best people. They're not necessarily the worst people either, but I know for myself, the times in my life where I've caught myself looking in the mirror, thinking, ah, I'm not so bad looking. Those tend to be the same times in my life that I've been a self-centered jerk. You know, I am easily the most self-centered person um, that I'm aware of, certainly. There might be more self-centered people. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Enjoy yourself. But I want political leaders who are not self-centered. I want political leaders who are empathetic and think about others first, right? I'm looking for a candidate with an underbite and combination skin and a unibrow. That's what I'm looking for. Bring me someone from your bin of unkempt and asymmetrical people, please. That's my request. I read that in 500 BC, ancient Greeks had a system of voting. Uh, it was like a negative election. Every year, voters would vote for the candidate that they most wanted to be exiled for the next 10 years. That's not a bad idea. That might get some voting up. They would write down their choices on broken pieces of pots. And in Greek, the, the, the word was ostraka. And that's where our English word ostracized come from, right? Because you got ostracized from the community. And I think we should look into that. Imagine the voter turnout if we got to vote for the politician you wanted to kick out of Canada for 10 years. That would be a pretty good uh, system. I read that uh, extroverts are more likely to vote than introverts which raises an interesting conflict when you have a secret ballot. People most likely to vote are like, look, look what I did. You're not allowed to do that. Uh, older people are more likely to vote than younger people, which I think should alarm younger people more than it does. When you're 25, you wouldn't let your grandma pick out a shirt for you. Why are you gonna let her pick out a government for you? My mom is 78. I get nervous when she drives the car, let alone the national agenda. 
And that's not being mean. That, that is just math. Mathematically speaking, I think if the vast, vast majority of your lifespan is in the past, it's not fair that you get to vote on what the future is. What do you care? You're not going to be there. That's like voting which movie we're all going to watch and then falling asleep five minutes in. Cut it out. And I'm not saying old people shouldn't be allowed to vote. I just think maybe old people should only be allowed to vote on things that affect the past. Right? What's our scurvy policy going to be? How much should a chimney sweep license cost? Weigh in, Grandma. So I think my time is about up. And uh, I guess if there's anything I'd like to say to you, it's, it's to repeat what you've heard uh, all meeting, which is please vote, educate yourself about the issues that matter to you, and then vote for the candidate that best reflects those values. And if you absolutely can't vote, then I think my advice is find at least one other person who's voting differently from you and prevent them from voting too. <laughs> Just kidding. Thanks very much, you guys. Have a wonderful afternoon. Oh, Dean. <laughs> uh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much for that. Uh, we really do appreciate you coming today. Um, um, so uh, this brings us to the end of our webinar, and I know many of you are probably are disappointed, um, but <laughs> we still we, um, come to our end of today, um, and we want to thank you all for joining us. Um, thank you so much, Judy, for sharing your perspective and your experience as well. That's absolutely been very helpful. Um, thank you to Elections Canada for answering our questions um, and, uh, and for also being here um, to answer. So thank you so much Jeannie, for answering those. Thank you so much to Joanne, Kevin and staff for and Donna for creating these wonderful videos uh, that we'll continue to share. And thank you so much Dean for certainly making us laugh today. Um, uh, boy, oh boy, we're, um, we should probably get you for our AGM. We certainly need those laughs, um, but uh, really do appreciate that. Um, I hope that you all took the opportunity to make sure that you do get Elton votes. Um, remember, this is your opportunity uh, to get your voices heard and to vote in a federal election. I want to remind everyone that election day is Monday, September 20th, 2021. And please check in your uh, areas uh, what, what the vote-in times are. Um, as often people say, you, if you don't vote, you can't complain. Um, regardless, it's really important that uh, the people who came before us um, have fought for decades. And we don't want to go backwards uh, on that. We want to show that we're proud of regardless on who we vote for, uh, that we sent that clear message in. And if you're not happy about anybody in your area, um, go and send a clear message. Hand in your ballot and say, I'm objecting to my ballots. Uh, and in that sense, that at least then you still vote it uh, at the election. Okay, so because I know that's going to challenge one in. Uh, any questions throughout the time, please reach out to us directly. Um, but uh, And I want to thank the interpreters, uh, Juan and Anne, for joining us today um, as well. And uh, and everyone else and, and all of you guys for joining us. Also, thank you so much um, for Monica for the technology and for sending us up and to our incredible staff as well. Telling you, Lord, we are on as well. We really appreciate that. Uh, um, again, finally, vote, vote, vote. Advanced polls do open tomorrow until Monday. If you are not here on election day, um, if you are here on election day, please get out and vote. Can't do that. Do mail and ballots. There's no reason why you can't vote. So please do so. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we really do appreciate that.